Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with part three of our sponsored tutorial series looking at the Mevo streaming cameras and how you can use multiple Mevo streaming cameras with their multicam app to create really dynamic video streams and recordings without the need for a lot of equipment. You just need the cameras and a phone or a tablet and you're good to go. That includes recording and streaming. In part one, we unboxed the three pack of these cameras, got them set up, and within a few minutes, we were recording and streaming simultaneously. And in part two, we looked at taking the output of your Mevo Multicam app and feeding it into Zoom and Teams and other video conferencing applications. In this video, we're going to focus on some more advanced topics of production because you're able to overlay multiple camera views on top of each other at the same time using picture in picture. You can also put graphics up on screen and titles. And we're going to look at setting up all of those things in today's tutorial. And in our final video, we're going to turn this over to my kids and have them use all of these concepts we've learned to produce a little live stream of their own. It's gonna be lots of fun here, but before we get into it, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Logitech who manufactures the Mevo cameras, and they reviewed and approved this video before it was uploaded for accuracy. So let's get into it now and see how we can get some graphics and picture in picture going on our Mevo Multicam production. All right, so we got the Mevo Multicam app loaded up here on my iPad, and I can very quickly switch between camera views like we did in the other videos, just by tapping on the view that I want viewers to see. So I've got one view on me here. I've got another one outside like we had before because these are wireless cameras. And then I also set up this overhead view, and this one's actually on a microphone arm that I use for podcasting. One of the things that I like about these cameras is that they have a reversible tripod mount on the bottom of them. So if you unscrew the tripod socket and flip it around, you get yourself a larger socket that you can use with microphone stands like this one. So you can very inexpensively and easily get yourself an overhead view for the kinds of picture in picture things that we want to do in today's demo. And you can see we've got uh, the mouse here in view of that camera. So let's start off with a very simple picture and picture demonstration. So let's go back to the app here. And right now I've got my mouse that is front and center on screen, but I also wanna put my own face on as I'm explaining something in the video. So what I'm gonna do is click on the plus icon down here, and we're going to go over to picture and picture. And then what it's going to ask me to do is select the camera that I want to appear in the picture in picture frame. And because I want my image in there, I'm going to select the one with my image on it here at the bottom. And I'm gonna click next. And now you can see we've got a demo of me down here in the left-hand corner of the screen. And if I click done and then tap on this, you'll see now that it has popped my face up alongside the mouse. So I can go ahead and work on this and talk about what I am doing to the camera so viewers can see me and the mouse at the same time. Now that picture in picture is going to show up in the lower left-hand corner of the screen and maybe I want to move it someplace else. So what we're gonna do now is go back into our app here and click on edit. And now what we've got is a similar uh, screen to what we had earlier, but this time we're going to make some adjustments. Now, if you wanna go with default sizing and framing, uh, what you can do is just very quickly adjust things by uh, picking the horizontal and vertical orientation. So I could put it in the dead center if I wanted to, or put it up here at the top. You have a pretty good uh, ability to move things around very, very quickly if you're in a pinch. But we can also adjust the size of this, so I can make it larger or smaller, as you can see. And you also have the ability to do some cropping here too. So I could put it into a portrait aspect ratio and I just have to adjust myself to get into the right spot. I can also uh, use a circle or a square here if I wanted to get more creative. And that's all just with a single touch, but you can also get a lot more granular here too. So if we go back to this and select free placement, what I can do now is use my fingers to kind of drag things around and position uh, the box where I want it. So maybe I want a larger one over here, maybe a little bit further off from the side than it would be placed normally. I still have the ability to adjust the aspect ratio here and I can adjust the size of it like we did uh, on the automatic settings before. I could put a square here if I wanted to. You also have the ability to change the color of the lines around the, the framing here so I could make it 
for example, may be uh, purple, and I can adjust the size of that stroke here to make it thicker or thinner. And there's also the ability to round out the corners too. So let me uh, click done here and give you a look at uh, what it looks like now. And you can see we've certainly made some changes to this and I can always go back in and adjust it further from there. And I could get rid of the framing altogether. So if I didn't want any stroke at all, I can just turn that off. And if I wanted to keep everything square here, I can drag that over too. And some other things you could do involve maybe having no frame at all and making the image a little bit larger here. So I can have, for example, myself here and then leave the other half of this blank so we can put in the mouse. So let me click on done here and you can see that changing now. And if I go in and just adjust my camera position, uh, I can now have myself full screen here while I am working on the mouse. So you really have a lot of flexibility. But basically the way this works is that your picture in picture is overlaid on the current background. And the current background right now is the camera that we have selected here. So if I switch over to the outdoor view, you can see now that the outdoors is on the right hand side because the picture in picture is on top of the outdoor image as it is on this one and even a double up of me if I wanted to do that. So you do have a good amount of flexibility once you understand how all of these things work. Basically your picture in picture again will be on top of the background image. Now the picture in picture of course will remain on as you switch between different camera angles like we demoed earlier. So to get it off what we're going to do is go back over to the graphics button here and just tap that picture in picture off to pull it off the screen. Now you can have multiple picture in picture overlays at the same time. So it's actually possible to show all three cameras simultaneously. So let's do that real quick. We're gonna jump back to my app here. I'm gonna hit the plus button. You'll notice that I have the two up that we set up earlier currently running. I'm gonna go over to picture in picture and I'm going to select the outdoor view, which is the only view we don't see right now. I'm gonna click next and you can see it puts us down in the lower left hand corner, but I'm gonna put us up in the top right here. Just go with the default, click done. I'm going to turn it on. And now you can see we've got all three here running simultaneously. These are all live images coming in from all three of our cameras here. But I did wanna show you one item related to the layering and the order in which they appear. And basically the order is the order in which you enable them. So what we're gonna do here is edit the picture in picture that we just placed. I'm going to click on edit here and I'm gonna move this over to the left. And when I do that, you'll see right now it's on top of the half PIP I created earlier. So I've got this PIP on top of this one. Now, if I disable both of these and then enable this one first, followed by this one, you'll see that this one is covering up that one. But if I turn this one off and back on again, it will now be on top. So there is an order of operations here that will determine what layer your PIP image will appear in. So now let's take a look at adding graphics to the mix. And to do that, we're gonna hit the plus icon down here and we're going to go over to graphics. Now we're gonna begin with full screen overlay. And this begins as just a basic static color with some text in front of it. So I can say this is a test and click on uh, done here. And what I'll get is a blank slate essentially that I can put up over my video. And this might be something useful because if you're about to start your stream, what you can do is put this up and kill the audio so that you can get your audience in. They'll know that you're ready to go on YouTube and then once the audience numbers are where you want them to be, you can click on the audio here and take that graphic off and then begin your presentation. Now you can also customize this a bit. So I'm gonna go into edit again. And what I'm first gonna do is maybe turn this into a yellow background. I'm going to change the color of the text to white. And I'm also going to adjust the opacity here. And when I do this and click done, We'll have my image up here first, but if I go ahead and enable the full screen overlay, you can see that I am behind it. So you can have your viewers see that something is about to happen. And if you keep your audio off, what you can do when you're ready to go live is basically hit both here at the same time, and then your audio is up, and then everyone can see the regular broadcast as it begins. So it's a nice way to kind of do a teaser, perhaps, of what you're about to jump into. Now we can also, instead of having a static color background, use an image. So I'm gonna click on background image 
And what it's going to do now is pull in photos from my personal photo library on my device here. And what I think I'm going to go with here is a picture that my kids took on Halloween. So we'll click on that. Now you'll notice that we have a narrow window here, and that's because this is a vertical photo that we have to get configured for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio that our video is being broadcast as. Now I can zoom it in a little bit here. I can get everything kind of cropped to where I want it to be. I also have the ability to rotate the image a little bit here on the bottom if you wanted to do something to straighten things out a bit. And now that I've got things where I want them to be, I can go ahead and click on Done here. Now you'll notice the text is still on screen. If I want to get rid of that, I can just go through here and wipe it out. And even though it says add your text here, if I don't put any text in, that text won't be in the image when we finalize things. One note, at the moment, you cannot adjust the opacity of the image. So it's going to uh, go on top of whatever you have on screen, and you won't be able to see anything underneath it. I'm going to click on Done here. And this will take a second because it does have to pull the image down from your image library and add it to the app. But now, as you can see, we've got uh, the kid's image front and center, and I can overlay things on top of that. Now, if you want images that aren't going to take up the entire screen, you have some options for that as well. Let's go back into our plus button here, go to graphics. This time we're going to select over the shoulder. And when I do that now, we're going to have a very similar interface to what we saw before. And this is actually going to look like something that might take up the whole screen, but it will not. Now, you have the option, like before, to put in text and have that static color image with the opacity but we can also just choose an image from our photo library like before. So I'm going to go with this one here. This was my Halloween costume. It had some lights on there, very festive. And like before, I can't adjust the opacity of this, but I can put text over it. And if I leave that text blank as I have it here, uh, it will not show up on the image when we get to the final part of this. Now, I've got my image. I have everything the way I want it. I'm going to click on Next here. And now you can see what my options are for this. Now, right now, I can put it on the left, the right, the top, or the bottom. I don't have as many options with this at the moment that you would have with a picture-in-picture. -picture, but I think for a simple graphic that you want to put up on screen, uh, this is pretty easy to get going. I'm going to click Done now. And like before, it's going to uh, grab that image off of my photo library and integrate it. And if I go uh, over to our video here, I'll put my image up on screen. And then I'll jump back here and overlay it. You can see now I've got that image over the shoulder, and I can work with it that way. And then when I want to take it off, I can just tap it, and that will make the image disappear. So if you wanted to have something on screen so the viewer knows what you're talking about, you can create a bunch of these and just turn them on and turn them off as needed. Now, you can also do some branding here if we go into the corner bug option. And what I did earlier was I loaded in my channel's logo into my photo library. And I'm just going to select it here and get it all sized up. And you can see the corner bug feature gives us a very little image that we can put on any of the corners here. I'm going to put mine on the uh, top left, and I'm going to click Done. Now, I do have to enable it like I would everything else. And if you have an over-the-shoulder happening here, you've got to be careful about placement. But as I go back to my camera view here and start switching cameras, you can see that the bug is staying static. So if you wanted to brand yourself a little bit without a distracting image, this is probably the best way to do it. Now, you can also add a lower third image where you can bring up text to identify somebody or maybe use it as a scoreboard if you're doing a baseball game or something like that. So what we're going to do for that is click on the plus icon again, go back to graphics, and we're going to go over to lower third this time. And what I'm going to do here is just type my name in. We've got the keyboard popping right up. Now, you can just have this as your text, or you can get a second line here and say uh, the host with the most. And what I can do here is just get rid of the keyboard. Again, like before, we can change the color. We can adjust the opacity. I'm just going to go with the basics here to start, and then we'll look at some other things that we can do with it. So I'm going to click Next here, and I'm going to click on Done, because I'm happy with it being in the uh, lower left-hand corner there. And now I'm going to put my camera view back on. We'll go over here. We'll jump back to here. And then when I click on the image, you can see now it's got my lower third up identifying who I am. And of course, I could add a bunch of these if I had a number of other guests on the show. 
and to turn it on and off you just have to tap on it. Now you can also brand these a little bit with an image. Let me show you an example of that. We'll go back to the one we just created and what we're going to do is go over to selected image here and like before it pulls up our photo library but now I can put my logo in here. Let me click on done and now you can see that I've got my logo along with my name here so you could have your logo in the lower thirds as you are identifying people on your show there and we'll pull that up and you can see now we've got the logo and the uh, text next to it. Now as you start to add items to the graphics here uh, you will be able to scroll through the list of the things that you created. You can also reorder things so for example if I'm going to be using this picture in picture more frequently than the lower third if I click on reorder there, I can move this into a different position and lock it in. Likewise, I can also hold my finger down here and get to that menu as well. And this gives you the ability just to get things adjusted to uh, how you may most efficiently work in the middle of a production. One thing that I strongly suggest is that you get everything set up well ahead of your events. So you can properly test things practice and get some muscle memory down so that when your production does happen everything will look very smooth to the viewer. You'll notice here as I tap on different camera angles we're getting a nice cross dissolve between them and the way you set that up is to go over here to the uh, three dots on the right hand side of the screen here and if you go over to transition type you can set what this will look like. So right now I've got it on crossfade. The default is cut. I could also do things like a a uh, slide where things get slid out and I can also set the duration of those slides. So right now I've got it at half a second and I can also do something here called flip-flop. Let's turn that on and see what happens. And then if I go back to my cameras here and flip-flop through, you can see that it's changed how that works. And you can go back in and adjust that on the fly. Pretty cool stuff there to adjust how your camera angles will shift in the middle of your production. And then of course you can put your lower thirds up and your PIPs up just by tapping on them inside of the app here. One other thing you'll notice is an option for auto director. And what this will let you do is kind of operate this without an operator. So if you turn this option on, what will happen is the software's AI will try to determine which camera angle to go to based on who is talking. And what you can also do is set up a safe shot that uh, the AI will automatically go to on a more regular basis when it's not sure. So if I hit the uh, star icon here on my view, that's going to be kind of the dominant view that it'll go to if it's uncertain. But if it's very certain somebody is talking, it will cut to them. And you have some ability to operate this while you're participating perhaps in the stream or the meeting. Now by default when it's in this auto director mode it's going to hold each camera angle at a nine second minimum and I would recommend that because you don't want things switching too quickly but you can shorten it up to as low as three seconds if you want but again I think the default of nine seconds is pretty much where you should land on this one. So at this point you should have a very good feel as to how this multi-camera Mevo system works and how to make the most out of its features. In the next video, we're going to do a real-world example of all of these features in action as my kids do a live stream so you can start thinking about some ways that these features might work in your particular environment. Before that, though, I'd love to hear some feedback down in the comments section of things that you would like me to cover in that example, and we'll be back in a week or two with that one. So stay tuned. More to come on the Mevo cameras, and I want to thank Logitech for their support of the channel. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.